So you got your 808 and it sounded good and you got your bass and it sounded good and you can't fit them together. I got one word for you. Track spacer. Maybe that's two words. So I started using this plugin track spacer a little while ago to solve thorny issues in the bottom end and I just thought I'd share with you what's going on. If you think stuff like this sounds kind of cool then it would be awesome if you would hit that subscribe button. And how about ringing the bell so you don't miss any part of the conversation. So I just want to quickly show you how I use track spacer to get two competing elements to work together. Plus, I'm going to give you a little tip on 808s that can be like a really quick little hack to get them to work. So I'm mixing a song for the Boom Booms who are a really well known Canadian band. Those guys are so cool and I asked them, could I use a little piece of their song in a tutorial? So thank you to the Boom Booms for letting me use this. This is the 808 that they've got going on in the song. So pretty full range, it's, it's a higher range 808, but of course there's lots of bottom end in it. And then they've got this massive bass. Lots of times in the song, they're functioning in different places, but in a certain part of the song, they do happen at the same time. And maybe you've run into this where you're going like, oh man, how do I make those fit together? That's where track spacer comes in. Here's without track spacer, both playing you can hear the 808 playing on the one. But here's with track spacer put in. So what's going on? So you take a send on the 808. You could do it the other way around, but I wanted the character of the 808 to come forward. So this is a send, here it is, do it pre-fader. So on Pro Tools, this is how you do it. You can do it on lots of other DAWs, very similar routing. And then I put that side chain here into Waves Factory. You can change these parameters, obviously. I left it wide open because I was going all the way to the bottom of the frequency scale and this part of it just didn't matter. You can get in here and tweak parameters. In this instance, I didn't really need to do that. What I like about this is it doesn't push down the entire signal, only the competing frequencies. So the 808 is sidechained in, you can see it in the blue. And then the push down, you can see in the white. That way, the 808, the character of the 808 is coming through, it's pushing down. The more you do it, the more it pushes down. Be a little bit subtle with it and you'll get really, really cool results. Okay, and the second thing, let's just have a look at this 808. So I didn't process it a lot because it actually already had enough high end in it uh, for the context that it was in. And you can listen to this song, it's called Siempre. It should be on all digital services really soon. What I have found with 808s is around 100 hertz. If I take this out, You hear how the character that changes? Now it sounds like it's less, but actually the bottom end, the sub lives around 60 Hertz. So it lives sort of around this zone. And then the part of it that you hear in small speakers lives up here, like maybe a thousand Hertz or something like that. What I've found is in smaller speakers, that 100 hertz area is the part that blows them up. So if you take some of that out, you might find that you can get your 808s louder in the mix without blowing up small speakers. That's my second tip. Okay guys, that's it. You can set that up in 30 seconds or less. And if you're making content and putting yourself out there, I've got nothing but respect for you. Why don't you please leave a comment and tell us how you deal with this stuff so we can all learn from each other. See you guys next time.